David Girling. Welcome to Muddy Creek Rabbits. Today's a, something different. We're doing our first request video. I've had several people comment and ask me after my last video, how often do I clean the cage? How long does it take? Um, what are the difficulties with a wooden pen? So today we're going to show you. Um, I have to apologize. Our two roosters that are near the pen have been going off all morning, so you're going to hear a lot of them. Um, this is what I consider a dirty barn. We clean once a week, which is what we've been asked how often we clean. But on litter pens or dirty box stoves, we clean twice a week. Or as often as needed, which is really the correct answer. How often do you clean rabbits? One thing I like about the bigger pens, because that's also what I've been asked why you use such big pens, is even on the litter pens where they make a mess, there's enough room where they can get off and not sit in their own waste. So we're going to start with cleaning a wooden pen. This is Orange Blossom. She's a junior Rex Doe. She's a tricolor. So people often ask, how long does it take to clean a pen? If all I'm doing is scooping, dumping, and filling, it takes three to four minutes per pen, but I very rarely do that. Um, cleaning is also when I evaluate the rabbits, check them over for any injuries or anything. If I'm breeding the rabbit or the doe, I this is when I normally do it. I breed before I clean the buck pens just because they make a mess and stir everything up. Um, this is also when I compare rabbits in the same breeding program. Um, what I mean by that is I compare, say, a tri buck to another tri buck, and if I've got the reds, I use compare the reds. I only use reds in the tri program, um, or else if I'm comparing cows, I compare cows to cows. To the blacks that are only in the or only in the Californian program, and then we use the agouti patterns. And what I mean by agouti are castor, opal, amber, and lynx, and they go to our selfs and our brokens. Selfs are black, blue, chocolate, lilac. Um, brokens are what the doe is in this pen, where it's castor and white, or black and white or whatever the color is and that's programs out to where our otters are. We do not breed otters in to the tries. We do not breed anything other than blacks that do not carry anything else into the cows and the blacks out of that program only get bred back to cows. Um, the casters we do not breed into the tries because I don't like tried casters and I don't like putting those genes into the cow or the caster program because oftentimes if I sell a caster people forget that there's tries after a couple generations and they fall off the pedigree and I've seen them end up on the table with new breeders or youth breeders that don't know anything. So back to orange blossom here. She's coming out and when you pick up rabbits the ideal way is to pick them up from underneath pick them up and you carry rabbits like this. This way they feel secure they're not normally going to kick and scratch and it's the easiest way to transport. Occasionally I have to pick them up by the scruff of the neck and by that I mean I fold the ears back if possible. Sometimes they're too wild and I can't. And just grab them by the flesh there. If you're showing, I highly discourage that because you can stretch out the neck meat by actually separating the skin if you do it too often. Or else, especially on Rex, you could ruin the fur over here. Another way people pick up and not so much on seniors, but juniors and smaller breeds is called loining, where you take one or two fingers, however you do it, and your thumb and stick it right 
in the loin and pick the rabbit up by that. That is the worst way I've ever seen to pick up a rabbit. If I see somebody doing that, not only will I call them on it, if it's a judge, I will not show under that judge. If it's a breeder, I will not sell to that breeder. I've had people tell me, well, they're juniors or they're only meat rabbits. Um, we do sell for meat. Our meat rabbits are raised exactly the same as any other rabbit up till the time they go. We show them the same care in anything. There's not just a meat rabbit. To me, there's rabbits. Some go for beet, some go for show, some go for pets. But they are all raised and handled the same. So anyway, we go over to my table. And my table's kind of a mess because this is where everything in the rabbit barn gets stored. And evaluate her. She's a very nice doe. She could use some more black on her. And her texture is just a touch soft, but she's nice. She's about four and a half months old now, just shy of five. Um, she's got one more show tomorrow, and then because our next show isn't till the end of October, she may or may not be shown again. She may end up as a breeding doe because I have certain feelings about showing senior does. Young senior does, I understand, after about nine, ten months. Does are supposed to be bred. Their job is to produce the next generation of show rabbits. I don't keep does more than three, four litters. I don't care what they're producing. Their job is to help produce themselves. Same with the bucks. There's nothing in my barn older than two years old. If they haven't outproduced themselves, there's no reason to keep them. If they have outproduced themselves, again, there's no reason to keep them. You've got better rabbits in the barn. So, that's my opinion on that. So, she's been evaluated against other tri does in her age group. And I've kept two out of about five litters. I have nothing against junking an entire litter. There's no reason to keep something out of every litter. It's either a good rabbit or it's not. And as I said, if it's not in the same age, or if it's in the same age group and you've got two good rabbits and you've got four junk rabbits or not so good rabbits, the junk ones go for me. The not so good ones if it will help somebody else's breeding program, or if my does that I've out used to outproduce would help somebody else's program, I often just give them to them, especially if it's a local youth breeder. The juniors, sometimes I sell. Sometimes if they're not good enough for me, they still go in the meat pen. So, that's what I do when I clean. So now we go back to the actual cleaning program. The items that I use to clean are purple bucket to dump the excess food in to feed the chickens, toilet brush, dust pan, and the cutoff hole to scrape. I also have, this is a 55 gallon barrel that we cut down. It's cut to this height because when we used to use the open front pens it will fit under there and we could just use the hoe to scrape in. But since we've gone to the solid pens now we just use the dust pans. So just clean. You can see a lot of the shavings are still dry. Most rabbits are fairly clean, they only mess at one corner. And this is the corner you want to make sure you get everything. I always go top to bottom, that way if anything falls, it falls in. 
So this one, orange blossom messes in both corners, so you got to make sure everything along the back is clean. I'm not so worried about the dry shavings and straw, but you want everything done. We'll see cleaning once a week. That's how long it takes to clean out the pen. So now you can see the wet in the back, but the ammonia does not stay in the pens. So now we'll fill it. So I got my shavings. I use an old grow pot, flower pot. Works good. A couple different sizes. Use whatever comfortable, what did you have access for, tubs, whatever, carry the barrel over. So, needs a little more, so I'll get some more, and we'll be back with straw. So, I've got the shavings in. You want a good bed, but you don't need it super thick. If you put too much in, all you're doing is wasting money. You need good quality shavings. There's a couple different types of shavings. There's this kind, which I prefer. And then there's this kind. This is a softer, flakier type. It doesn't absorb as well. We use this with the chickens because obviously chicken poop is drier for the most part than rabbit urine and rabbit poop, so it works good for them. But not so much the chickens, or not so much the rabbits. So we put our straw in. Not everybody likes using straw, not everybody likes using shavings. This is what I found works the best. Straw is nowhere near as absorbent as shavings, so if you use straw you're going to have to clean out a lot more often in my opinion. So straws in, food dish goes back in, we go over, we get the dough. Now she's still a junior. So, and she, like I said, she's about four and a half months. This is when I start being concerned with weight. Anything up to this point, I don't care. I did a little quick video on litter size comparison where the two week old, or two week old rabbits, the two in the litter box are much larger than the six or seven that were in the other pen. Right now they're about catching up. So that I don't care what they weigh at four weeks or six weeks, as long as they're not extremely runny, which with practice you can tell. So make sure your scale's flat. Make sure it's a fairly accurate scale. If you want to check, we use gallon jugs for water. A gallon's about eight pounds, give or take if you're exactly a gallon or not. And wrecks normally are around eight, eight and a half pounds. Lar some lines are larger like mine, but on average they're about eight pounds. So you put the gallon of water on the scale. If it reads about eight pounds, you know it's fairly accurate. So we put her on the pad, or on the scale. And she's right at, if she'll hold still, she's right at eight pounds. So she's made senior weight at four and a half months. That's what I worry about. Once, at, as long as at six months they make senior weight, that's the goal. I like mine to go heavier. I don't mind mine going over as long as they're in condition and their shoulders don't get too long. A lot of times you see rabbits that make weight and she's not going to sit that way because she's not built that way. But they have a long, and she's really stretched out now, they've got a long shoulder. They've got that extra inch or two to give them the weight. So you want a shorter rabbit. I don't like the ball rabbits that you ball them up, put the front feet under the elbows. Because yes, this makes you look like you have a lot of rise, but that's not going to help with your breeding program. It's not going to help with the breed. Pose them naturally where the back feet are under the hips, 
front feet are under the eyes. Edge of the hock or end of the hock should be even with the end of the rabbit. Now this this is what the standard calls for, and this is what I breed for. Judging lately, they've been wanting the shorter, higher rabbits, but this is what I'm breeding towards. This one isn't perfect, obviously. There's no such thing as a perfect rabbit. So you want a gradual rise to the top. Ideally, she should peak about this high, right over the hip line. She peaks a little early. There's a little bit of a slope. She's not horrible. She's starting to stretch out a little bit. And you want it rounded all the way to the floor. A lot of rabbits now that are starting to peak at the right point just drop off. That is what the judges refer to as flat. Another thing you'll hear, or chopped, another thing you'll hear judges comment is undercut, which is where the sides of the rabbit, or the hind end of the rabbit and the hind quarters go in. You want nice wide all the way to the floor. Another one is pinched. Pinched rabbits do not stay in the barn. I don't care how good the fur and the rest of the type is. Pinched rabbits do not stay pinched. Those, if they're too pinched, can have trouble birthing. Pinched bucks will just throw that in. Pinching. Sit still, girl. Pinching is where the rear hips, if you put your hands on them, the, your fingers will eventually touch. I'm squeezing hers so I can show you. Hers go. One way to evaluate, if I can get her to move, and this is from the, when I raised Rhinelanders and learning from checker breeders, and she's not going to. But when they track, you gotta run the other way, girl. Come on. Yeah, I've worked with you too much, you know how to sit. You can see when she moves, her, re her hind end and her feet stay nice and wide. Another way to do it is when you flip them over, put your feet down. If they won't sit with their feet, you just push on their toes. And you can see hers are nice and parallel and wide apart. If she was going to be undercut, her feet would be closer together and straight. If you're holding them upside down and they go to flip over, let them go. If you hold them, that's a good way to break their back or their neck. So just flip her back over. If they're going to be pinched, her heels would be closer together and her feet would be spread out. So as long as she's over, check her belly for any abscesses, look for any issues. Right now it's middle of September, it's still warm, a lot of areas including here you have to worry about bot fly bites. They're actually not bites, the bot flies actually lay their eggs in, on the rabbit and the larva burrow in and it's disgusting and you have to pop it out like a pimple but you have to be very careful to get the thing all the way out. If you're uncomfortable doing it that's one of the few things I would recommend taking to a vet. If it's young it's not such a big deal on brokens they just have to match the same and corresponding foot but you check toenail color. I always start with the front feet because if the front are all correct most likely the rears are. So what I mean by corresponding is if she was going to have dark nails both her front feet have to have dark nails and they all have to be the same color. And you go to the back. When you trim rabbit toenails you trim don't cut the little pink part. That's the quick. It'll bleed. It hurts the rabbits. Other than that, you want to keep them short. But you have to keep them just long enough for the judge to tell what color they are. So, you let her look. I let them wander around so they're not scared of the table. 
can also kind of evaluate, especially on young ones when you're looking at litters, how they look when they're on the table. Some of them will just sit more natural than others as far as showing. You can check their bone. When we evaluate litters, that's the very first thing we look at is the bone. If they're not going to make weight, there's no reason to keep them. So, and then we look at fur. Fur's real easy to look at. On Rex, sorry, I'm allergic to rabbits and allergic to goldenrod, and they're both really out right now. <coughs> Hi, Olaf. Rex are supposed to have a plush, dense coat. You can start to tell what the coat's going to be like about four weeks old. If it's thin, it goes. Even at four weeks, we have a reptile market that we can sell the young ones to. So it's bone fur. Then on color breed or color varieties like the tries and the cows, then we go to color. And look for any DQs such as torting on the tries, um, martinizing or a goody on the cows as I'm still trying to breed that out. And then we go to type. Or if it's one of the regular brokens or selfs, otters, agoutis, we skip that color part and go straight to type. And this is when we compare them to their others in the breeding program to start with. And then we go back to color. Color is the last thing you pick for in most color or most varieties. If you have a litter with blacks and blues and casters, you pick the best one. If you don't like casters, but that's the best rabbit in the litter, that's the one you grow out because obviously it's carrying a black or it's carrying a self gene of some kind if there's other selfs in the litter unless you're breeding caster to caster then you're not a <laughs> and we normally pick two three four in a litter if it's a big litter to let grow out because we start weaning at five weeks and then we evaluate again every week until we've whittled, either whittled it down to one or two or we've gotten rid of the entire litter. Then we let the does rest a little bit and then we start all over again. So I've got her. This is when you brush out. There's no cobwebs in her pen. So that part is easy. Normally you swipe out cobwebs before you put the shavings and straw on or even before you clean it. And now you do the outside. Do this every week, it's easy. Get the fur off, get the cobwebs off. I hate spiders, but our barn's over 100 years old, so unfortunately I can't get all the spiders out. This is Danny, I'll clean her later. She's a junior cow doe. You just and sometimes as I'm doing it I'll do some of the other pens they're gonna get dirty as I clean them anyway but I think it looks better and then once everybody's done in the barn you sweep sweep all the stuff off sweep the ceiling get the cobwebs up there try to get rid of the spiders then once everything's done we hang fly strips in the summer because Again, it's a hundred year old barn and I can't keep flies out. So, that's it for today. Thank you for watching Muddy Creek Rabbits. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them. Please subscribe and like the channel. And I will see you next time.